Hi, I'm Pastor Matt, the pastor at Christ the King Lutheran Church in Westchester, Ohio. Thank you so much for joining us for our weekly worship webcast. Please go to our website at ctkluth.org so that you can learn more about our mission and ministry and to find ways that you can join us in creatively bringing God's Word to life. Now, I invite you to focus your hearts and your minds on the presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as we experience worship together. Sweet while shepherds watch our keeping. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds God and angels sing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Ephesians. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. 
of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things. So that through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's time for our gospel interruption. I brought with me a little treasure chest in honor of Epiphany and in honor of our gospel lesson, where we hear the story of wise people coming from the east, who have seen signs in the heaven that have let them know that a king is being born. They recognize Christ's presence in the world, and so they bring with them some gifts to share, some treasures. They bring some gold, and they bring some frankincense and myrrh. I happen to have the oil of gladness that is scented with frankincense and myrrh, and I've opened it, and I can tell you it's not a very good scent, but it's an excellent gospel interruption. And you can see there are lots of other little jewels stored in this treasure chest. The gifts that these wise people bring to offer to the Savior remind us that God gifts us with the knowledge of God's presence but with other gifts as well that we are called to use in response to knowing that God is present in Christ Jesus and that we have been redeemed. Each of us have the gift of sharing this story, of being followers, of sharing the good news. We don't have to be afraid. That's what happens with King Herod. When he hears that Jesus is near, he becomes afraid and wants to hold on to what he has, and is unwilling to share with anybody. As opposed to those wise people who bring gold and frankincense and myrrh, and share it freely and willingly. And we are called to do the same. To acknowledge God's presence, and to share the gifts that we have been given. Let us pray. Gracious God, Help us to know your presence in Christ Jesus. Help us not to be afraid or to feel scared, but help us to willingly follow him and worship him that we might share our gifts in his glory so that others may come to know him through us. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all of Jerusalem with him. And calling together the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, so for it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for this child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. 
When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, whose presence and nearness we celebrate this epiphany. Amen. So coming right after Christmas, right after the season of Christmas where we have been inundated with the idea that Christmas will be spoiled unless we get enough gifts, we have this story of wise people from the East looking at the heavens, seeing the signs, knowing that a king is going to be born and seeking out his presence. And they come prepared. They have gifts to share. It is better to give than to receive, we are told. And so we are supposed to be like these wise people, showering each other with gifts. But we miss the whole point of what it means to experience Christ's nearness. To experience the nearness of God does not mean that we gift each other PlayStation 5s or a brand new car with a big red bow on the top of it. I don't know about you, but if I drove home with a big red bow on top of a new car without talking to my wife about the finances, she'd probably be filing divorce papers for me, not hugging me in excitement that I'd given her a Christmas gift. We've gotten so confused about what it means to use gifts and to be generous that sometimes people will even go into debt, credit card debt, in order to purchase the perfect gift to share with somebody else. The story of Christmas, the story of the Epiphany, is not about giving physical things. It is about faith and acknowledging how God continues to be present and at work in our lives. There are two examples in this story for us to look at, and one for us to try and emulate, and one that we actually usually are more closely associated with. The wise people show up. They go to Herod's palace and they say, where is this king who's going to be born? And Herod says, say what? He is deeply disturbed, we are told, and all of Jerusalem with him. It can feel like a threat when we encounter Christ and when Christ calls to us. Because it requires that we let go of what we think is important. That we don't hold on to things the way that they used to be that we don't focus on our understanding of how the world it should be, but we allow Jesus to lead us. This is what Herod is doing. He's trying to preserve and hold on to what he has. He views any news of a newborn king as a threat to his power and to his reign. He wants to hold on tightly to his kingdom and all that he owns. It is better to give than to receive, we are told. We try and follow the example of the wise people to notice that God is present and is with us and to share generously of our gifts. Now the gifts that we are told that the wise people are sharing with Jesus have great significance for his life and for his ministry and for his death and resurrection. 
the challenge for us is to give freely of the gifts that we have, to not try and preserve or hold on to what we have, but to acknowledge that God is present and God continues to abundantly bless us with gifts, with more than we could possibly ever imagine and more than we could ever possibly need. To become a follower of Christ means that we are called to let go of those things that might give us comfort and security. We have to let go of our preconceived notion of the way things should be. We see that again in the nexus of the wise people searching for the presence of Christ and in Herod denying Christ's presence. He wants things to stay the same. But to encounter Christ, to encounter the Christ child in the manger and the Christ who is crucified and resurrected changes us. Things are no longer the same. We can no longer hold on to the old things, the old ways we used to do things, but we are called to experience the light and life of Christ in the world and to share that light and life with others. Over the past couple of years, we have encountered some real difficulty in our world with a pandemic and then trying to figure out what we can do and how we can be church in the world. There's a lot of hair pulling, a lot of people who are saying, well, everybody just needs to get back in church. I'm wondering if we might need to revisit that statement. Rather than expecting people to get back into church, that maybe we need to look for the places where Jesus is and follow those signs. Rather than expecting people to show up in the palaces that we have constructed or in our places of safety, to look for the places where we are called to help people experience the presence of Christ and to examine ourselves to see what gifts we have. It's a frightening and scary place. To think of business as usual as being disrupted by a child who was born in a manger. But everybody's understanding of who God was and what God did was completely upended after Christ is born. It continues to be upended as Jesus does his ministry in the world, welcoming people on the margins, telling everybody that there is enough for you and more than enough of God's grace and mercy for you. So much so that he will go to the cross and show us God's abundant love. Wherever Jesus goes, Jesus disrupts people, asking them to stop holding on to those things that they think will make them safe and to rest in the promise of God's love and mercy and grace, to reframe how they are looking at the world. And this is the challenge for us. Jesus continually challenges us to let go of those things that are comfortable and are safe in order that we might be able to proclaim the gospel in the world, to be aware of the signs of God's presence in the world and not to be afraid to go and experience wonder and awe at the presence of God. This is the other thing that divides Herod from the wise people. Herod is full of fear and worry and anxiety, whereas the wise people are filled with wonder and awe at the signs that they have encountered. They want to know more, they're curious, and they're excited to engage, and they bring what they have in order to celebrate. Herod is only trying to hold on to and preserve what he has. In the end, both groups won't be able to hold on to anything that they have been given. But one group, the wise people, will have had a richer experience for being able to let go of those things that may have brought them temporary happiness, of being able to use their gifts in order to celebrate and worship 
the true king. We are led astray by false idols and false senses of security and safety all the time. It's 2024, and you and I both know that that means we are getting ready for the crazy and silly that is the election season. All of the commercials, all of the ads nonstop telling us to be afraid of something, to follow this person because they will bring us safety. The good news is that in Christ Jesus we already have safety. We have security in knowing that Christ's presence with us, Emmanuel, allows us to experience God's gifts of mercy and grace and allows us to not hold on so tightly to those things that we think will make us secure and lean more into God's promise of life and love through Jesus Christ. You have been uniquely gifted by God to help somebody else experience God's presence here and now. You may not feel like it. You may feel like you have nothing to bring to the table, but let me tell you, you have value and worth in God's eyes. God loves you. So much so that Christ came into the world, came to be near us to show us and teach us about this love. Sometimes it's hard for us to recognize the signs that God is present. Sometimes we don't feel gifted enough. But I guarantee you, just as the wise people from the East, God has prepared you and given you plenty of gifts to share in abundance, in celebration and in worship of the one who comes to give us new life. It's freeing when we are no longer worried about holding on to what we have or preserving what we have, but we develop and cultivate a sense of wonder and awe, wondering what God is going to be up to next, being awed at the way in which God continues to show up and surprise us. And in the manifold ways in which our gifts continue to mesh with the needs of those who are around us in the community and in which the gospel can continue to be proclaimed, that we can share this news of life and love and hope. We call this weekend Epiphany because it is a revelation, a realization that Christ is near. And when we can live as if Christ is near, our hearts turn away from selfishness and fear to generosity. We can give freely of the gifts that we have been given without strings, without worry about getting paid back or even worried about whether or not we are getting recognized for what we are doing because it's not about us. It's about doing the hard work of loving others in the name of the gospel, in the name of the one whose presence we are called to notice and to celebrate again and again. It can be challenging when our inner Herod comes out. We want to go more towards the inner wise person instead. It's freeing and it certainly helps us to relax a lot more when we relinquish our need to control. We can simply look for the signs and the ways that God continues to show up and surprise and delight and amaze us. Then we can join with the wise people from the east, following the star and the light and worshiping the sun giving our precious gifts so that others can experience his presence through us. Amen. And now, may the peace which passes all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. When a 
star is shining over eastern hills when the air is silent and the glamour stills when the night is waiting and the old hopes rise then the time has ripened and the heart grows wise lead us on lead us on Gathered in the presence of God and of one another, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God, who is near to us, help us to recognize your presence. Help us to share the gifts that you so abundantly pour out upon us, so that through us others may come to encounter your presence in their lives. Help us not to be afraid of what it means to be in relationship with you. Help us to follow the guiding of the morning star, your Son, Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Raise up leaders, O Lord, with the gifts for peacemaking, gifts of reconciliation, and the gifts of hope to share with this world that is broken and torn by violence. Bring peace to all of those who are experiencing war and its difficult aftermath. 
Raise up leaders who have hearts for peaceful solutions, who will continue to look after the well-being of all whom they have been given charge over. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the gift of healing to all of those who are struggling with physical and mental health. Surround those who are experiencing difficult diagnosis and treatment with caregivers whose gifts can help to ease pain and can provide help and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O God, for all of those saints who have shared their gifts with us, who have shown us your presence in our lives, and who have led the way following in the footsteps of the peace and love that your Son calls us to follow. Give us the courage and strength to share our gifts in the same way those saints have gone before us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All of these prayers and the prayers of our hearts we lift up to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for worship this week. Please be sure to check out our Facebook page and to like us so that you can keep up to date on our most recent mission and ministry activities. A challenge for you as you head out into the world this week. To focus less on your King Herod and more on your wise person. To cultivate a sense of awe and wonder at what God is doing in the world and at how God is using your gifts to help others Experience God's presence here and now. And now, receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you and grant you peace. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. song.